Good morning. Thank you, Billy. You know I love you, brother. I also want to thank all of you for being here today. I'm both humbled and honored to be up here this morning. Memorial Day is a sacred day in America and a day when we put aside political differences and debate to honor the valor and sacrifices of the brave Americans who gave their lives in the service of our country. It's heartwarming to see so many of you here today. I would like to acknowledge everyone here who has served our great nation or is currently serving now. A very grateful nation salutes you. Samuel Adams, known as the father of the American Revolution, said, The liberties of our country, the freedom of our civil constitution, are worth defending at all hazards, and it is our duty to defend them. The brave American patriots we honor today did just that, and they paid for it with their lives. But, as General George Patton said, it is foolish and wrong to mourn the patriots who died. Rather, we should thank God such patriots lived. Freedom is never free. I would rather die for liberty than live under tyranny. So when I heard my country ask, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. Who am I? I am a carpenter, a teacher, a lawyer, a policeman, a fireman, a doctor, a farmer, a neighbor. I am your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your granddaughter, your grandson, your father, your mother, your daughter, your son. I died on an empty stomach and with frostbitten feet at Valley Forge. I died with grape shot in my heart at Gettysburg. I died at the Battle of Bella Wood in World War I. I died storming Omaha Beach in the Second World War. I died cold and tired at the Chosen Reservoir in Korea. I died at Salting Hill 875 in the Central Highlands of Vietnam. I died from a roadside bomb in the center of Baghdad. I died from a sniper's bullet on a mountain in Afghanistan. I fought and died for freedom for my country and for you. I know Memorial Day doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. To some, it means the end of school, the beginning of summer, family picnics, parades, and the Indy 500. On the other hand, many will fly the American flag in my honor today, and many others will quietly place a flower at my grave. I'm concerned, however, that in America today, fewer and fewer understand what it was that compelled me to answer the call of duty, and in the end, cost me my life. In 1775, Patrick Henry declared, Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. This is why I answered the call, and although it cost me my life, it guaranteed you your liberty. Today of all days, I ask that you try and understand why I died fighting for you. Please read the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Gettysburg Address. Really listen to the National Anthem, America the Beautiful, and God Bless America. As you honor me today, I ask that you not grieve for me, for I died for what I believed in, and I'd do it again, even knowing I would suffer the same fate. But I do ask that you promise me that you will not let freedom's light die, so that the life I gave for you will not have been in vain. Who am I? I am the American patriot, and I made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom, for my country, and for you. When I, Ray Reed, joined the Army in 1969, I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Throughout our history, many Americans died in battle after taking this oath. 
The timeless words spoken by President Lincoln at the Gettysburg battlefield continue to echo loudly throughout the land today. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. As we honor the fallen today, we must remember that freedom is never free and that so many have given their lives to preserve it. America is the brightest beacon of freedom in the world today and the staggering cost of this freedom is buried in cemeteries all across the USA. President Ronald Reagan once said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. In order to ensure that those we honor today did not die in vain, we must keep the fire of freedom burning brightly, and we must not be the generation that lets that fire go out. Or as President Reagan continued, one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men and women were free. We know what our military does every day to keep us free, and we know the price the fallen have paid to keep us free, but what part do we ordinary citizens play? Well, we stay vigilant, we get involved, we vote, we hold our elected officials accountable, we support our troops and their families, and we never take our freedom for granted. You know, we weren't just ordinary citizens when we banded together, defeated British tyranny, and conceived this magnificent nation, and we aren't just ordinary citizens today. We are American citizens, and because we are free, we are in charge of our own destiny. We, the people, are responsible for the future of an America where freedom, opportunity, and prosperity continue to flourish. This is from a World War II poster, but it's just as appropriate today. It reads, Today at the front, he died. Today at home, what did you do for freedom? Friends, if we lose freedom here, there is nowhere else to go, and we owe it to every single one of the American patriots we honor today to never, ever let that happen. Earlier I said that Memorial Day means different things to different people. In closing, I will share with you what it means to me. Forty years ago today in Vietnam, I attended a Memorial Day service for the soldiers in my unit who had been killed in action during the month of May, 1970. Lined up in a neat row were 30 pairs of combat boots. There was an M16 with bayonet affixed, stuck in the ground behind each pair of boots. Perched atop each rifle was the soldier's steel helmet. In a war zone memorial service like this, the helmet signifies the fallen soldier the inverted rifle with bayonet signals a break in the action and a time for prayer, and the boots represent the final march of the last battle. As the brigade chaplain slowly walked down this row of battle crosses, solemnly reading the names of our fallen brothers, young men hardened by war openly wept. On that overcast day in May, 10,000 miles from home and surrounded by my fellow soldiers, I felt the meaning of Memorial Day. Its meaning can never be fully captured by words on a page, lyrics in a song, or images of war flashed on a TV screen. No, its real meaning carves out a place in the heart with memories that can still wake you up in the middle of the night 40 years later. Memories like this one left by a nurse at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall. Her war was Vietnam, but her story and her fallen hero can be found in every one of America's wars. 
My name is Dusty. I did two tours in Vietnam. One night I sat up with a 19-year-old Marine named David. He had been critically wounded saving the life of another. His kidneys had been removed and he and I both knew the unspoken truth. He would not make it through the night. This is my gift to his memory. Hello David, my name is Dusty. I'm your night nurse. I will stay with you. I will check your vital signs every 15 minutes. I will document inevitability. I will hang more blood. I will give you something for your pain and I will do my best to comfort you. Yes, of course, I will write your mother and tell her you were brave. I will write your mother and tell her how much you loved her. I will write your mother and tell her to give your bratty kid sister a big hug and kiss. I will stay with you and I will hold your hand. I will stay with you and watch your life flow through your fingers into my soul. I will stay with you until you stay with me. Goodbye, David. My name is Dusty. I'm the last person you will see. I'm the last person you will touch. And I'm the last person who will love you. So long, David. I promise you will not be forgotten. The Bible tells us there is no greater love than to give your life for another. Our fallen comrades have demonstrated that love for us. Just think about that for a moment. Brave Americans, most of whom did not know us personally, nor we them, gave their precious lives so we could be free. In a few minutes, taps will be played, and like many of you, a tear will most likely come to my eye. Every time I hear taps, that Memorial Day in Vietnam immediately comes to mind, and I think of a poem by Walt Whitman about two soldiers killed in battle, a father and his son, who are buried next to each other. Standing at their graves, he writes, The moon gives you light, and the bugles and the drums give you music. And my heart, oh my soldiers, my veterans, my heart gives you love. This, to me, is what Memorial Day is all about. Love. Love of freedom, love of country, and love for all the brave American patriots like David, who after they answered the call of duty, gave their lives for you and for me. May God bless all those we honor here today. May God bless our troops. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you.